and my first two guests are already ready. Uh, it's Christine Wilson from Simplot Australia. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. I think it's now about 5 a.m. in the morning uh, in four. Australia. 4, 4 a.m. And we have Paul Labagnera from yes. the Lab Strategy and Planning in Australia. And we're going to talk a little bit about the opportunities that virtual reality pose. Because you guys have written and submitted a paper. Yep. And we'll be actually doing a talk later today uh, or actually tomorrow, yep. 10 a.m. on Channel 1, if you're watching, about those findings. But we'll have a sneak preview in here. Before we continue, I've read your paper, yep. and I noticed that a lot of your colleagues have the access to, to Google Cardboards, yeah. right? Yeah. So I might as well start up the 360 video recording of this little interview, so after the show, your colleagues can actually watch in 360 and what it was like for you studio. guys yeah. to be in the studio. And if you would like to see that as well, I'd be happy to post that on the, uh, Facebook, uh, the SMR Facebook page, right? So go over there and like that. Back to the content, yep. right? Your paper is titled, A Debrief Through a Virtual Reality Window, Using Virtual Reality to Illuminate Consumers' Insight Like Never Before. Tell me a little bit about the background of the project. Yep. Uh, basically, Christine and I uh, worked on this, on this project together. It was, uh, we really needed to shake, something, sh uh, shake a few things up back, at, you know, back with the team. And we had, we're really fortunate because Simplot have such a quite a vast marketing team and we want to try to do something new with those guys and so maybe you want to talk mm. about the, the project what needed to be yeah. shaken what up to be done. oh yeah. well i think um, we know there's been so much advancement happening in the world of research with technology so as an insight leader we wanted to be seen to really harness what that new technology can afford us and rather than just doing things the same old way we'd already done we thought why not um, really engage our stakeholders the wider commercial marketing team and get them really excited about driving innovation and growth in our business and we thought why not use virtual reality as a fantastic tool to really immerse them with our consumers so uh, we had a company-wide project um, in the midst, which was all about driving new business growth with a mandate to really push innovation. And as market-leading you know, retail brands in, in grocery in Australia, we really needed to come up with new product ideals, um, ideas with our um, consumers. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, so from our end, it was like, how do we get close to, these, you know, to the consumer base? And mm. it's really hard to bring 45 executives yeah. out across Australia. And we kind of went, well, why don't we see if we can do the inverse, you know, sort of go the other way. Yeah. yeah. And Bring uh, the consumer back to back the executive to them. desk. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, technology and your, you know, your little camera here, I'm not sure what it's going to look like. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like yeah. with the ones we used, you know, we had them up on tripods, a little bit like what you guys have got here in the studio. And yeah. we brought them in house and we ran a bunch of tests to kind of make sure that it actually sort of worked. Um, but then we were able to, you know, do the actual study. Yeah, because that was yep. step one. You use virtual reality cameras, yep. three, 360 degree spherical cameras yep. for your data collection process, yes. right? One step back, what was the research question in this case? Um, it, it was really about, it was like observational ethnography. So we wanted to actually understand what our consumers were doing in the kitchen. So we really wanted to observe all the pain points they went through when they were coming up with what they're going to have for dinner. So how they used our products, how they used competitors' products. We wanted to do it in a non-controlled way. So really it was about trying to give our marketers a front seat or, you know, at the table um, with our consumers without having to Literally leave their desk. bringing them into the kitchen the, of that yeah, consumer. Exactly. And really just understand what exactly they go through um, to prepare meals. Mm. That was step one. Yep. And obviously you collected the data, a lot of technical logistical yeah, problems, yeah, yeah, read yeah. the paper if you want to know read all about paper. that. Yep. Uh, but in the end, you got 360 recordings. And then what? Yeah. And then it was a process of sort of actually quite a hard slog of going through yeah. it all and piecing and finding the moments. So with the actual mm -hmm. study, one of the difficulties was we weren't there. You know, the whole idea with the study was don't be in the room with them, let them sort of do their own thing, let them feel comfortable, which meant we had to go back over all the vid, all the video, so yeah. all the footage. And that meant watching editing it all together, Spotting finding, in yeah. In 360 directions, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, who's that, who's talking, what's this, what are they doing, who are they chatting to, why did they do that, and then us piecing it all together, and obviously knowing the, the teams back yeah. at Simplot to go, okay, cool, well, we think this is going to be relevant to them because she had real trouble there, 
mm. with say some packaging or you know whatever moment. There was a particular moment that we saw. I remember one of them ah, where. So you specifically selected moments yeah. specifically From for the stakeholders footage. in your company. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you've just got hours and hours of footage. I mean, it's a bit like your editing team here. You know, like if you had to go through that and get their guys going through mm. that, it just yeah. wouldn't work. Don't have the time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So then the day of the debrief came. Yes, we had 45 members across our wider commercial team, um, product development, um, research and development, um, and brand managers. And so they actually watched three minute video footage of their key consumer groups, as well as actually having a workshop um, amongst the wider team. So we actually had a bit of a pop quiz as well um, for the guys um, to actually make sure they were paying attention. So it literally was only two things. It was Google Cardboard and an iPhone. So two very simple things yep. we were able to get the guys to engage and really be immersed with consumers. So um, they all really enjoyed it. I think that was one of the biggest wow moments was the fact that, you know, they were seeing their consumers uh, literally with them in their kitchen and, um, and being able to see things that they ordinarily would never have the chance to actually go like and engage with. On, on average, how many consumer kitchens would I see in this debrief? Oh, we had five or six, I think, across our key segments. Yeah. We cut down and they went for about three minutes, um, right. depending on what your target market, target consumer was. But we had 16 cameras in total yeah. exactly. running. And then uh, you wouldn't have seen all 16 people. You would have seen no. a few people. Yeah. yeah. Now, this all sounds like a great yeah. success story. Where's yeah. the learning? What can people learn from this if they want to embark on uh, the VR journey? Uh, I think prepare. Oh, it's all about preparation. Mm. and. Uh, the technology's new. I mean, even now, I think we probably wouldn't yeah. do exactly the same no. thing as what we did last time, but it's all about trialing it, making sure you feel comfortable with it, getting the respondent to feel comfortable, having a mm. camera in their yeah. house, and knowing what the teams need, I think is real from a researcher's perspective. Yeah. It changes our role a bit. Mm. Yep. So kind of actually going, all right, well, we need to be the facilitator here as opposed to the questioner. Um, mm. So knowing what's important to the team and then sort of trying to look for and find and no, not presupposing the answer. Like a part of ethnography is kind of seeing how the cards fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think from that perspective, really important. Yeah, because I guess in that editing process, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I read a lot about removing researcher bias. Yeah. But aren't you reintroducing it when you edit the material? Yeah. yeah. But you you basically find all the pain points. You find all the difficulties people mm -hmm. have, you, or something where they kind of seem to do something pretty well, or you know, like. You don't try to put your wash over it. You just let it. You just let it go. And we, the story we told was one of whatever occurred occurred. We didn't put a, a commercial right. lens or, uh, you know, or our own bias. Or we'll try not to put our own bias. So you're exactly. right. There's a bit mm. of a bit of a balance. Yeah, you need there. to be careful there, I guess, right? Yeah. If people adopt this. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Very now, true. Christine, to round off, I read a lot of excitement in this paper, yes. also because it's new and it's new technology <laughs> and it's VR. Yeah. That's gonna rub off, right? Yes. How sustainable is this as a debrief method? Oh, I think um, we'll definitely be looking to do it again. Just because of the scale and the breadth, we're actually able to get such an enormous amount. We've got a huge commercial team, so we'll definitely look to do it again. I think we've got a few learnings, because it certainly wasn't perfect, but we're already seeing it running through the business. They're using it in social media and even doing it to help with our factory tours, so getting our retail partners actually being able to use it so they can see you know, about our company. So I think there's a lot of positivity and a lot of excitement. Um, and you the technology is new, it's always advancing, so I think it's one we'll definitely you want think to keep. It's, it's stronger than keep the doing. excitement We've started of new something. Stuff. We've yeah. started something now definitely, and I think we wanna wanna keep going. It's better than listening to me talk the whole for two hours. Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. And I it think it's be the short and snappy. It yes. does actually yeah. just like this interview. Yes. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that. If you're interested in virtual reality, the applications, to learn more about, of course you can find the paper on the Congress website, but you guys are doing the summary tomorrow, yep. ten o'clock at channel one. So I invite you all tomorrow that in your calendars and also on Wednesday the closing keynote at 1.30 which will be broadcast on Channel 1 as well is by Jennifer Duong and that is also all about virtual reality in the market research space so lots for you to come and eat if you want guys thank you thank very you. much thank you.